Hey guys, Dr. Anthony Gustin here, about to tell you three ways to test your ketone levels. So when you have the breakdown of fats in your bloodstream, those can go in your blood, in your urine, and in your breath. So those are the three ways, kind of from a high level, how you can test your ketones. So let's just start with number one of urine. And so what happens when you first get started on a ketogenic diet, and your body's starting to ramp up ketone production, the excess ketones that your body doesn't start using ends up being flushed out in your urine. And so you can use pee strips and basically go to the bathroom, pee on these little strips, and they'll turn a color. And so it's very inaccurate to do this, but you can basically look and see, does the color get more purple or not? So this is a great, really easy, cheap tool to use when you're first getting started on a ketogenic diet because you know it's free, <laughs> pretty much, to just use your own urine and, and pee on these strips, and instant result. However, the caveat here is that once your body starts using ketones for fuel, you're not gonna pee them out anymore because it says, okay, this is a great fuel, start putting this in the tissues and use it for energy. And so this is not a reliable thing long-term, only when you're first getting into ketosis. And so if you're new to keto, totally use the strips and do that. Okay, second one, breath. And so there are some uh, companies out there right now that have meters where you can blow into them, kind of like a breathalyzer, but what happens here is the acetone or what you breathe over as an excess is just an unreliable marker and the machines are really, really expensive. After you buy them once, they're there for a long time. There's a company called Lovell that makes a really good one, but it's pretty expensive. So what happens there is you take a little machine, you blow into it and it says a level that you can measure um, of your acetone readings. Again, that's a little bit of an indirect measure, so it's not really what's floating around in your bloodstream. So it can be a little tricky and a little inconsistent over the long run. Um, number three would be blood. And so this is the most common one that people use when they say, oh, my ketone levels are at X, Y, or Z. So if I say like my ketone levels are at 1.5, that would be millimolar concentration in your bloodstream. So this is the most direct way to measure ketones. So when you have a breakdown of ketones in your bloodstream, you're measuring exactly what's floating around in your blood. So anything over about 0.5 is technically considered in ketosis. But another caveat here is that once you start going into ketosis, the first four, six, eight, 10, 12 weeks, you're gonna have pretty high ketone levels. But what happens is once you start getting fat adapted, again, like we said with the urine strips where it doesn't spill over to your urine, some of the ketones get soaked up and put into your tissues at all times instead of floating around in your bloodstream. Your body gets way more efficient and effective at using the ketones as an energy molecule, and so less is just floating around in your bloodstream. This is the same thing as if you are a very active person, you have a lot of muscle mass. Most males, for instance, it's hard for them after they get keto adapted to get above like a 0 0.5, 0 0.8 or so. Um, whereas some women and some people who are a little more thin effortlessly go between you know, 1.5 and 2.0. Ketone levels don't really matter that much. It's just a great indication to know in the beginning if you are in ketosis or if you're not. But you don't get an award, unfortunately, if you get to 5.0 millimolar or above. And so more is not always better. It's just kind of a binary thing. Are you in ketosis or are you not in ketosis? So this will help give you that feedback loop to make sure that you're on the right track. I would recommend the blood testing. A little more expensive. The strips are about a couple dollars each but it's the most effective and most accurate and easiest to track over the long period of time. So if you have any questions about how to test your ketone levels, pop them below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want, I answer all questions on Instagram, so just follow me at DranthonyGustin, shoot me a DM and I'll get back to you, and we'll see you next time.